Well, hello. Welcome back to another episode of Tattoos and Toddlers. Y'all, I just, I did a typical mom thing. I forgot this was even on the calendar. I just, I could not believe I forgot I was going to have Chelsea on today. Like, Chelsea is like the coolest person I've met so far in the last couple of weeks. <laughs> And I was like, okay, here I am trying to do this whole podcast thing. Um, so I'm Jen, a wedding photographer and conceptual artist. And I really love talking about what it's like to have parenting mixed with business because those of us that run our businesses know it's different, a different mindset, a different heart set that when we're running businesses and having small children, it can be get, get really hard and it can get really crazy. And uh, we were just talking about mom brain. So Chelsea, go ahead and introduce yourself. We're going to go get right into this. Awesome. Hello, everybody. My name is Chelsea. Um, I am the director of special events here at the Hall of Lights. Um, and I have a two-year-old and twin girls on the way due in October. I yeah, know. No big deal. She says that like it's no big deal. <laughs> you know, I'm playing it cool right now, but, um, you know, I'm adjusting to the fact that life's going to get even more cha chaotic here in the next uh few weeks, months, and years. <laughs> so Yeah. And I, I'm so glad I met you because I just, I know amazing parents out there that they, the, especially with the twins. Oh my God. Like I just, I've seen so many parents just knock it out of the park with their twins. And, and I think, I think at some point we realized babies really just need the basics of life, right? You know, you want to eat, you know, eat, sleep, poop. That's it. <laughs> Trying to keep them alive. We'll worry keep about all alive. the cute stuff, uh, you know, as we go, but keeping them alive <laughs> is the main goal. You know, and that's how I felt when I had my baby. Okay, like I had a singular one baby and I thought to myself, this first year is about keeping her alive. Okay, so now we're in year six. <laughs> keeping you're her rocking, alive. I'm sure. <laughs> Um, so I wanted to go ahead and talk quickly about mom brain because we were just discussing like how I opened up the podcast. I, I already done spilled my coffee on my card table earlier. I needed to refill a prescription. And then my husband's like, well, I want to go get this thing for this thing that we're doing. And I was like, well, let me go get that Home Depot card for you. <laughs> Life. So and all this before that 15 minutes where I refilled my coffee and, you know, just all that wonderful stuff. So Give me some examples right now of your mom brain, because it's like, I know we, we were joking about the podcast and how this is probably your first podcast and probably the best podcast you'll ever do. Just kidding. Of but course. it's like, you were like, I, I might have forgotten the questions. And I was like, no, there weren't any. <laughs> no, it's it's true. I was in a tasting yesterday um, and one of my clients was like talking about, oh, you know, how do stations work, you know, for meal service. And I'm over here going on about stations. And then all of a sudden I look at them and I'm like, did I even answer the question you asked? Because at this point now I'm just rambling about food. And I'm like, it, it is so different. I, I feel like I am the type of person who was so organized and like well-spoken and could like articulate my thinking since having my first son that has gone down the drain a hundred percent. I love to talk and ramble. And now I'm like 10 minutes later, uh, did I even address the question you asked me? Because now I don't even know where I started. <laughs> so, you know, it happens to the best of us, but I literally looked at them and I'm like, but did I answer your question? They were like, no, you did. And I'm like, okay, oh my good. gosh, I just like did that much. I was going to say, I would be sad if you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I know I gave you way too much information, but Hey, sometimes, you know, less is more, not in my case. I'll just keep going. <laughs> yeah. You keep going until you stop me and then we'll see if you're, you know, and then she's like creating more questions as you go. <laughs> right. And like the 10 minute conversations now turn into an hour and a half and you're like, Oh wow, I didn't even know we could go down this rabbit hole. How did we get here? And it's like, I know. does it really matter? No, but <laughs> no. And I love that though because you know, obviously, we don't care. We, I, I enjoyed having that quick conversation with you, and I was like, hey, you should just be on my podcast because you're fun to talk to, mom brain or not. Right. So it's it's super fun <laughs> to you know to sit here and like just talk about having you know running businesses with small kids and. So, you know, and you and I briefly talked right before this that, you know, we both were in our businesses before we had children. So what was it like for you to shift with that first kid, knowing that you, I mean, we'll talk about the twins in a minute, but like that first kid and you're integrating that into your life and business. And did that just like blow your mind? Like whatever mind you had left? It was crazy. I am, I've always, I mean, I've had a job since a young age and I've always, I dedicate myself to it. Like I want to be successful in life. I want, you know girl power all the way. Like I started as a coordinator, you know, doing weddings on the weekends 24 seven. And, you know, here I am now director of a, you know, whole venue and with the catering company, I mean, it's great, but it, having my son was interesting. So I had him during COVID. So it was already a weird time. Yeah. Um, Cause me and my husband had been married for a little over a year and we're like, Hey, we should probably have a kid. Like 
we didn't get married at 21, you know? So we had him. And then it was at that point in time, I was the only one working at the venue and I genuinely love what I do. I love my couples. I love getting to know them. I care sometimes too much <laughs> about how the day is gone. And so when I had him, I used to dedicate all of my time, like, yeah, okay, business hours of nine to five. Yeah, jokes, because guess what? Weddings happen 24 seven. They need you 24 seven. And I'm the kind of person who is, to be honest, not the best at separating time management when it comes to answering emails at 9 p.m. at night. Boundaries. <laughs> so, right, yep. and it's hard. So when I had him, you know, you read so many things on social media and listen to all these things like, oh, you're going to blink and they're going to grow up or don't miss out on your kid's life. And it's so true. So it was, it was hard because when I left, I had to like give everything over. Cause I was like, no, I'm going to take these three months, truly be there for my son. And then going back to work was even more weird because now it's not dedicating all of my time to my couples it's hey you have a son you have to go home and you know he only has a wake window of so many hours so like even now he just turned to last weekend or two weeks ago and he goes to bed at 7 30. <laughs> okay well we try and get him down at 7 30. that is the goal <laughs> so you know it's weird i come home from work and i'm like where i used to stay late you know 6 6 7. now it's like i really do want to leave at a more reasonable hour to get two hours with my son i don't want to look back and think oh I only spent three hours a day with him, one hour in the morning and then two hours after, because guess what? He goes to bed and I'm still answering those emails half the time. <laughs> yeah. So it's, you know, have to Isn't prioritize that right funny? Here. Isn't that funny how we rearrange our lives to what, and I, I like to say this, We I, I have the mom and parent guilt all the time. So it's like, you know, that right there is an example of how you're rearranging your time management with your kid. So you technically don't have that guilt sneak up on you. So having that time with him, like this morning, my daughter's like, I just want to stay home and I want to have pizza for breakfast. And I was like, I thought to myself, okay, I could do it, but my brain doesn't work when she's in the room. So I'm like, oh, maybe I should just go ahead and get her early. Maybe I'll just tell her I'll get her early today. <laughs> Well, and yeah, that's the thing. Like, honestly, my boss who I work for, for like the catering company is really flexible. He has young kids, he gets it. So like, I can be do that. But then yeah, if Rory's in the room, I'm not paying attention. Like if I try and work from home, I'm not answering my computer. I'm not answering my phone. I do. I want to be in the moment. I almost want to keep the two separated. Here's my work life and here's my mom home life. So I can dedicate that attention. I don't want to be going back and forth trying to multitask between doing the two things, which I may be different than some people, but I don't know. No, and I was going to say, I think I've come to the conclusion I can't multitask. Yeah. And, I think, and there's too. nothing wrong with that. I just think that, especially since my husband moved into my office during COVID, I cleaned out my office, made it all pretty and it was shiny. And, and then he moved in during COVID, but he, you know, he's the main main head of the household he's got the big job and i'm you know i'm the artist over here doing all the other stuff and you know doing a whole different realm of things but it's like i i can function with him in here but i can't have a conversation with him and write an email yeah no. I, and he'll and then he'll just say you're not listening to me and i'm like i i can't do both and i'm like i realize that now but it used to be like a really big hot button with the both of us for communication because we're just like you're not listening to me. You're not paying attention. I said, I can't keep up, dude. Like I got to email my clients. I got to talk to you about something you told me five days ago in an email or a Google chat. <laughs> well, and then on top of all that, you're thinking about all the other mom things you have to do. Like, okay, do we have clean clothes? Do we have diapers? Do we have wipes? What is going on at school, you know, tomorrow? Yeah. So it's like, there's too many things running in my brain nowadays that I'm like, yeah. we have to commit one thing at a time. So that is a big change. <laughs> yeah, and that's a that's a big shift in, you know, moving the guilt around too. Like, have I addressed all of the things that are important to me in this priority list right now in this moment? <laughs> yeah. No, but really. I'm like, okay, so these top three things, I need to make sure my kid gets fed. I need to feed myself. <laughs> Sometimes that second one is very forgettable. You're like, oh, wow, it's been hours and I haven't eaten. Okay, cool. Let's drink some water. Let's hydrate, ladies. Let's go. Isn't it funny? I was going to say, I have the coffee. That's not the reverse of that. But like, I'll have water in, in a little bit. But <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I've already had my coffee, so no judgment here. <laughs>
I started to say, it is like almost 1130 now here when we're recording this. That's to totally fine. And then, you know, of course, my my husband's about to leave the office. So I, I went from the dining room over to the office now. And so I'm like resetting everything up, making sure all the mics are working and all the videos. And, and I was like, I screw it. Put my hair back. I'm done for the day already. <laughs> We're all, we're all just doing the best we can. That's we all we really can ask are. for. <laughs> I'm like, we just got to do day by day, one day at a time, you know? It really is. And if something needs to be put off to the next day, I'm just like, you know what? It's okay. I will write myself a really long email about things that are actually important. I don't know if, I don't know what your system is, but I'm like, <laughs> I write myself a really long email of sort of a to-do list. Um, I used to be that person. Like, I used to have the nine to five job where I, uh, sticky notes were everywhere, you yeah. know? <laughs> Well, it's funny. Last night I was sitting, we had put my son to bed and I was sitting there, we were watching a TV show and I'm like, oh, I forgot to do this. So I literally e my, email myself during the TV show, like, make sure to do this tomorrow for your client. Cause yeah, there's so much on your plate and it's like, you got to stay organized sometime, somehow, but yeah. Whew, and you don't want to forget. And I think that's the one thing too, is I'm afraid to let somebody down. I don't know if you have that, that going for you too. Like, you don't want to let anybody down. Don't want to let my husband down, my kid, my business clients, you know, the world, my friends. <laughs> the world is literally on our shoulders. Well, and I yeah. think that's and I are probably very similar. Like I genuinely care. Like sometimes my clients are like, oh, you're so great to work with. And you know, you get so many, you know, great reviews, but it's like, no, I genuinely, like if you book here, I, I want to get to know you. Like I'll get to know you personally, what your likes, your interests. And then on your wedding day, it's like, you've got to see them come full circle because since I work for a venue and a catering company, I see it almost beginning to end, which is honestly just so cool. So it really is. It's a, it's yeah. a fun, it's a fun profession to be in when we're serving people in, in their, whatever event they're choosing to celebrate, you know, mm -hmm. life events, weddings, we were just discussing funerals earlier. I mean, there's a lot of different ways that people celebrate and memorialize. And and I do love being a, a big part of a lot of it. Obviously, I'm the photography side, but it's like it's still an investment of our emotions and our time. And and I think um, that sometimes people don't realize that if, if you do have small children, they tend to take a lot more of your attention, and especially in those, those first years. And um, I know my daughter's six, but she's still in that mommy, mommy, mommy. <laughs> Yeah. And it's like, so it's, it's fine to, to be okay with where you are in the season of your life, I guess is what I'm trying to say is that knowing that your kid is unique to you, your family's unique to you and the businesses that we run, you know, we're not just like, we're not forgetting our kids. I, I think that's probably a misconception of the, of working parents is that, oh yeah, we don't care about our kids. I was like, eh, it's the opposite. It's the opposite. So um, as we're continuing our discussion here, what other things have you found that are about to blow your mind when you have twins? I know you're not, you're not sitting in that space for very long, but I know your life's about to change. I imagine we'll do a follow-up podcast because I'd be curious to know the mind-blowing thing that's about to happen <laughs> with a set of twins coming. <laughs> I mean, I don't even know. Like, so twins do not run in our family. Yeah. Like, it was very much a surprise that we're getting blessed with these two beautiful little girls. But, um... I mean, a lot, like, since I'll now have almost three under, yeah, I just turned two last week. So, you know, they'll only yeah. be two years apart exactly, pretty much. And I mean, it's just the lifestyle changes. Like, I always wanted twins until I had my son. And I thought, <laughs> I'm good. How, how do multiple parents, like, parents of multiples do this? Because, man, this one kid is a handful. <laughs> so, um, I don't know. I think it's going to be crazy because, like, you know, my son, he you know, you, there's so many doctor's appointments and especially when they are young, like, oh, we have our, actually have his two-year checkup today. So, you know, he was actually born blind in one of his eyes. So he was born with a folded retina. So we did a lot of testing at the beginning, like, hey, what is, what's going on? What's different? You know, there's just so many things outside of your work that you have to commit to, especially when they are so young. Yeah. So it's going to be crazy just having like three little nutcases, you know, and keeping the, the toddler happy, but then also like going to feed every three hours. Like I, Ooh, that's going to be a fun change for me. Um, but I don't know. Yeah. I get to buy a minivan. So like, that's pretty cool. Oh man. my God. Leveling up. <laughs> I, am. I know Leveling. the car seats alone, like you, obviously I was born in the seventies, you know, we did things different back then. <laughs> <laughs> well, and then that's what's so funny is so like, 
a lot of my mom friends are like, oh, well, you guys just need to get three car seats and like y'all can switch off cars. And I'm like, mm, that's not how it works in our industry. I work seven days a week, you know, or, you know, very random. Like, no, my husband and I both have to have vehicles that can hold three car seats and can be rear facing. And luckily, I mean, my husband's job is Monday through Friday. So he always has weekends off, but a lot of time I'm here off for work a half day, but it doesn't you honestly need to with so many kids but I, how am I going to get three kids in and out of a car seat alone don't ask me that question I have no idea how am I going to go to Target or the grocery store I don't plan on it thank, thank goodness for grocery pickups because I don't know <laughs> how anybody's going to get around three I was going to say so. the click in the click in car seats were a lifesaver for me and everybody made fun of me for using that until she until she was just way too big for it and I was like, you know what? Clicking that dang thing into the, the stroller was amazing. And if I'm, I'm assuming the multiples would be the same because all my friends with multiples are like, hey, let's just do this really awesome stroller. And I'm like, yeah. that's those are lifesavers. And th those, no, are, those seem like such them. little things. It's yeah, amazing. No, we've invested in them. The Dunas are great. I'll have two of them and they turn into their car seats and pop them right in. So, I mean, that I think it's great. Like when, when we had the one kid, you know, it's like we were trying to figure out our vehicles as well, but not everything fits in our garage. <laughs> so oh, I had to, I had to get a vehicle that would fit in the garage. So I couldn't go too big or too small. And I was just like, well, how do I do an SUV without being a mom van? You know, like, I don't want to be the mom van if I don't have to, but yeah. for your situation, I mean, you automatically got three kids instead of one. And then I'm like, I just, it, it so much space, so much space mm -hmm. takes up with any small children. And especially she's still in a booster seat now. She'll be in a booster seat till she's like either eight or I forget the pounds uh, for Texas right. law, but oh my gosh, it's like the toys and things that we have to have. <laughs> well, and it's funny, my mom babysits my son on, they go back and forth parks and things I'm like well you're gonna have to buy a whole new car seat like and if you're gonna take the twins we need three she's like oh you just like put them in a booster and I was like no I think you have like a hundred pounds my mom was like so I would have been in one in high school and I'm like yeah no you would so like I don't know what to tell you like things are a little bit different now mom <laughs> but it is it's crazy how much oh, changes funny. too between you know all the years I was telling someone the other day I'm like Honestly, there's too much information on the internet, too many things, the do's and the don'ts. And that also goes into mom pressure of working moms versus, you know, stay at home moms. Both jobs are equally as hard. I guarantee it. I so, learned a lot having a child at home and I learned a lot about myself. <laughs> and I think, and I think that's good though. Like we should all take the time to learn more about ourselves and how we actually work and function. And I realized like I, I went, I had a C-section with my baby. And then I, three weeks later, I was, I was second shooting my own wedding because oh, I had okay. hired somebody to come in because my due date was actually their wedding date. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So she came early. So she came yeah. early and I was healed up enough to go enjoy the wedding. Cause you know, like we're invested in our clients. We're that crazy that we'll, You're like, I will we'll come roll ourselves in there if we want to see the <laughs> fruition of all of the labor. Right. Yeah. Uh, so literally I, I had no guilt going there, but like, because I was, um, breastfeeding, it was a problem when I showed up and I didn't have any way to relieve any pressure. Uh, <laughs> so that was really difficult. <laughs> no, that's, well, and it's funny because everybody's like, oh, when are you going to be out for the twins? Like, when's your last day? And I'm like, what do you mean the last day? Well, oh, because I had a C-section with my first, so I'm going to have a C-section with the twins. And I'm like, I'll go up until the day before my C-section. Like, what do you mean? Like, why would I, I don't know. I physically can't even wrap my head, head around like leaving early, which I think is sometimes sad, but also like, I genuinely care. So like, I have some really great clients coming up right at the end of September and, you know, beginning of October. And I'm like, I'm, I'm going to be there for you guys. If I physically able to be there, <laughs> yeah, I will so, roll myself you know, in there. <laughs> I will. I may be large and in charge, but Hey, I'll show up. <laughs> and you know, that I started to say the only thing that, that made me deliver early was the fact that I flunked one of my protein tests and they're like, well, we're going to have a baby now. You're not leaving the hospital. And I was like, but I have a hair appointment and I have a <laughs> boxing class that I want to get to. And they're just looking at me like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> You, you're gonna have your baby though I feel no, fine I'm good <laughs> that's gonna be me I keep telling my husband I'm like just because we had Rory right at 40 weeks doesn't mean that I'm gonna make it to 37 with the twins like 
I'm going to start going here every week and they're going to start doing all that. And like, we have to do what's best for the little ones. Cause yeah, my first son was over eight pounds. I think he was eight, four. And then I know, but I was in labor for 62 hours, which that's a whole nother other story. That's a whole other story. Yeah. (laughs) Fluids. Um, but I have a new OBGYN, thank goodness now. And they were like, don't worry, we won't let the, both the twins get eight pounds. We're going to get them out before then. I'm like, okay, well, that's good. Because I don't know if my body could physically handle that. <laughs> you know, and my my friend, I tell my friend Amy all the time, like, I just, I, I was amazed. Her her twins were seven pounds each. And I was that's like, yeah. I looked at her and I said, girl, how? And, and we that's just, true. you know how it is. It's like, you know, every time I hear about somebody having twins, I think preemies because I have yet to find somebody that actually had pound worthy twins and she was one of the handfuls of people I've met in my lifetime and I was like wow I I just look at her like you're amazing seriously I mean I'm hopeful for some grow those babies grow right (laughs) I hope they get six, six seven pounds but you know we'll see it's so crazy with multiples you know it's it's been a whole I know every pregnancy is different but like even from my first to this one it's it's crazy. I didn't really believe it, but now I do. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? Have you found a difference between, I mean, what is a one specific difference between this, the previous pregnancy and this one? Not, not the fact that there's two kids in there, but well, it's, body wise. So it's, I w- obviously I had a boy first and now my twins are both girls. Yeah. I would just say even like the hormones, like I was so chill and honestly, I was cool the first time being pregnant. Oh. This time around, I can be sassy and like, like to my family, I am the easygoing, funny one. But, like now, if you make me mad, I'm going to say something. And like, it's just funny. Like I do, I have a lot harder time controlling my emotions with the girls. And I'm like, ladies, wow. let's keep the hormones in check. <laughs> wow. That is so fun to hear that perspective. Cause I'm like, I, I was pregnant three times. So I have three or four times. I have three angels and one baby, but it was like every pregnancy was different. And I definitely had, I definitely experienced when I full, full term with my, my child was I had a lot of snapbacks with a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, Cause it's like, why you care? Why, where were you in the beginning? <laughs> like, why, why are you all up in my business? I've got three doctors telling me what to do and everybody else is telling me what to do. And I'm just like, literally like, <laughs> and it's, when I snap at my husband, like we honestly have a really good communication style, like get along really well, but like, I'll be yelling at him and I'm like, I know this is irrational right now, young man, but like, let me just have my moment and let's just get over it because I can't do anything about it. And he'll just start laughing. And I'm like, thank you for laughing it off, but I'm like actually mad right now. So just like, let it be. And then like in 10 minutes, we'll be fine. <laughs> oh, but it's crazy. It's, it's weird how your body does different things. I don't know. So it, it is weird and it is, it's worth exploring, you know, like I, I try, people try to tell you like what baby kicks felt like. Yeah. And I was yeah. like, all of them were wrong. All of them, <laughs> like y'all don't explain it right. It's literally like a, a muscle spasm is what it is. It's a muscle spasm that doesn't hurt. Yeah. So if your skin's right. jumping around, I was like, that's what the kicks felt like. I was like, it wasn't like, oh, it feels like little bubbles. I was like, what, do, what's a bubble feel like? Yeah, no, I, yeah. I, and it's, yeah, I enjoy being kicked. I'm like, you kick me all day long. That makes me know that you're up there active and having a great di- time. The other day I went in for an appointment and I was like, I just wish they'd kick harder because I have two anterior placentas, meaning it's on the front. And he goes, yeah. I've never had anybody tell me that. And I said, okay, well I did because I want them to kick harder. Rory kicked me all the time and I loved it. <laughs> I love being able to experience that. Cause yeah, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't, I mean, when he's in my ribs and we were 40 weeks, yeah, that was a different story, but you're just uncomfortable, but I, I like the kicky feels. Oh my gosh. I, every time I would sit in the, the, I have a recliner now that we got a new recliner when I got pregnant. And so it's like, I still have that same recliner and I would just be relaxing and enjoying myself. And she would startle the crap out of me when she kicks. I would leave. I'm like, Whoa. And my husband's like, what's wrong? What's wrong? And I was like, she kicked me out of nowhere. <laughs> right. It's such a simple experience. I think. It was great. Well, as we are starting to wrap up here, is there anything that we want to leave our listeners with today? We've had a blast talking, laughing, businessing, talking about passion and our our babies and passion with our businesses. Is there anything we want to leave anybody with today as we start to wrap up this episode? Okay, mom brain, come up with something creative. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) I mean, I would, I just try to live life in the moment, you know, 
I, like everybody says, life's fast. So just whether it be work or with my kids, I just try and be there and experience it and enjoy it. And not, I don't want to worry about the little moments that I'm going to miss that everyone's saying I'm missing. Just the most I can do is do my best in that moment, in that time with whatever I'm doing. So life's short. I just want to enjoy it and look back and think, yeah, it's good. Yeah, yeah, and I don't y'all have y'all probably aren't seeing her face right now, but she does have a really wonderful smile and glow about her. It's not just because she's pregnant. But yeah, I just I feel that genuine response of being in the moment. Yeah. Because we spend way too many times trying to force things to happen. Um, we don't slow down. I mean, there's just you have to be have realistic expectations. I mean, I think the more expectations that you drop, the better your life can be. <laughs> And I think that's, I've learned that so much. Like no one's perfect. Life isn't going to be perfect. You're not going to get everything. Not everything's going to be the best, but it's just, that's life, you know? So just yeah. take it. Find your it's happiness, it find your joy, find your happy place. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I love that. I'm so glad I could have you today. And I, I know that I, my mom brain was like, I feel like I should reach out to Chelsea. And then I Googled your email and I was like, oh, I scheduled it for today. <laughs> Hey, at least it was the right day and the right time. So like, we're good. <laughs> oh, how amazing was that for me? Just to let y'all moms know that sometimes your little intuition voice, you kind of just need to listen to it and then go follow that train of thought. And guess what? It led me to Chelsea again today. So I'm so happy that we could do this. Awesome. No, thank you so much for having me. It has been so much fun. And I'm sure we will catch up again. And then Absolutely. When the we have to catch up again because I want to meet the babies. Of course. Of course. <laughs> so. All right. Well, have a wonderful day, everyone listening. And remember that it's okay to not be okay. But please get with your friends, get with your support system and, you know, find these little moments and enjoy them and, and find your little happy places. So Chelsea, thank you again for coming out. Of course. Thank you I'll for having me. Bye.